see that sign behind me. I'm not going to name any names, but an employee of the Jason Show, photographer Eric, stole that <laughs> as they were demolishing our old set. We had to retrieve it. The law had to retrieve it. And there it sits, waiting to be hung up behind us. Wow, you want that big hunk of wood on the wall? What did you call me? <laughs> <laughs> hunk of hunk of burning wood. <laughs> Here we go. Let's make it a good day. I knew this would happen. Uh, when I decided that we would have a purple curtain, I thought, oh, God, does that mean I have to retire my purple suit? Uh, because now I kind of feel like I'm a floating head, but that's fine. <laughs> There's a little bit of a backlight. There we go. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to the old show. First up today, every dog owner knows that their pooch doesn't always listen when you tell them to do something. I know my dog Milo always listens. Uh, uh, one dog learned the hard way about not trying to climb the fence. Come back to the TV. You have to see this. Uh, roll it, Leo. The dog named Cece ended up stuck in the air. Stuck in the air. Okay, Cece's fine, everybody. Cece's fine. Got stuck in the air after her harness got caught on the fence. In Detroit, <laughs> yeah. Despite, <laughs> despite, despite the odd position, the dog's tail is still wagging. Look at it. Her owner says, uh, "This is actually the second time this has happened that Cece has gotten stuck in the fence." That's right. And fun. Guess what? A little bit later, we're gonna do that to BB. We're gonna do. We're gonna. BB's gonna recreate that about the same size. Cue the music, Leo. Let's get started, everybody. Oh, yippee -yi <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Fallon, everybody. How you doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing well. Great. Uh, <laughs> I've got to tell you. Fallon and I just saw each other. Fallon uh, uh, had things to do and wasn't in our uh, pre-show meeting. And I know this is going to suffer in translation, but I don't care. Uh, go watch the Jason show before the show show. So we're all talking, and it's just our staff making fun of each other. And uh, we have, a, sh we have a, a story coming up a little bit later about the 30th anniversary of Friends. So I said, you know, um, my, my husband Colin can name, can quote it, can name every episode, is great with trivia. So we called Colin, and Colin uh, showed that he does know friends better than anyone. So we went around the, the table, and Jeff goes, well, Jason, you know, the show that you know like that is Dallas, right? And I go, yeah, um, you know, Dallas and Knott's Landing. And we turned to director Leo. <laughs> and can I just tell you that Leo, Leo says 50 to 60 words a year, okay? <laughs> And that's what makes this even funnier. We're all sitting there and Jeff goes, <laughs> Jeff goes, Leo, what's the show that you know backwards and forwards? This was Leo, Hogan's Heroes. <laughs> it's, it's a 50 year old show. Now look, Dallas is 40, I get it, but yeah. Oh God, I laugh so. 
Hogan's Heroes. <laughs> yeah. He knew. Well, what else? A Petticoat Junction? Can you do that one too? <laughs> oh, God. I loved it so much. He was, well, a Seinfeld too. Am I too late, Leo? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Is there, is there a show that you know oh, really man. well? I, I mean, I... I'm bad at like having things I've memorized because we even did this like on the Newlywood, like what is the most quotable movie that fell in quotes? I don't quote a ton of things. I, back in the day, I would quote like old school all the time, like everyone else, but, or Anchorman, but uh, TV shows, I mean, I love Gilmore Girls um, and I used to be really into Dawson's Creek. So I feel like that, that counts. Was, but I didn't quote it. That's not a quotable show. Their dialogue was way above my head. <laughs> like as, <laughs> as fake teens, they like use the biggest words and I'm like, act like I knew what they were talking about. I had but no you idea. Didn't. No, no. Oh yeah. I, but yeah. I was such an indoor kid. I, uh -huh. I could name. I could quote. You could pull up a Dallas episode. Uh -huh. I could recite the lines. You know, I, easily. And it's so pathetic. I know. <laughs> I, I get it. Yeah. Go ahead and laugh at me. It's fine. <laughs> Let's get started, everybody. It's time for the hotness. Let's get going. Well, first up. The fall TV season is finally here, and already there are some big hits rising to the top. First, uh, a show both Fallon and I are loving, The Penguin on HBO and Max. Here's the deal. Listen to these ratings. More than 5 million people watched the show in its opening weekend. That, my friends, beats the series finale of Succession. Wow. And... It beat the second season premiere of The White Lotus, another giant hit for HBO. That's surprising. I, the, the succession number surprised right. me. Yeah, my husband loved that show. He's watched the series through like three times and he loved the finale. I couldn't get into it. I was like, Me too. I was like, I kept watching it. I'm like, okay, they got, they're like cussing a lot. Um, I get it. They, they all want to be the successor. I was like, what's really happening? There's nothing really happening. They're just angry. And he's like, that's right. And I was like, oh. Way so, to sell it, Jake. I know, and I'm like, but am I missing? Why is everyone in love with it? I couldn't figure out why people were obsessed with it. I'm with you, too, and I had so many people tell me that I would love it. We stopped. We're mid through. We're midway through the first season. We got to go back. But now that I know how the show ends, though, now it kind of ruins it. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. turning to the networks, though, listen to this. CBS could have the first big hit of the season. Sunday's premiere of Matlock with Kathy Bates. Yay, Kathy! Listen to this. Oh, friends, listen to this. Uh, earned nearly 8 million viewers. That is the biggest series premiere for CBS in more than five years. And let's add another compliment to Kathy Bates. Matlock actually gained viewers from its lead-in, the mega-hit 60 Minutes. 60 Minutes is usually the show on Sundays. It's the NFL, uh, whatever game it is, and then 60 Minutes is usually the second biggest rating get of the night. It built on its, its the term is, it built on its lead-in, meaning it, it grew. Usually, you want a really good lead-in show, and then that helps bring viewers mm -hmm. to whatever you're bringing the next hour. That is very rare. That is very, just trust, it's rare in television. I I have to go watch it now. Move over Meryl Street. Kathy Bates is like taking over, yeah. right? Like I, I watched it. This is not my jam or jelly. I'm not a procedural kind of girl. Um, I, uh, you know, the crime of the week. I'm not a Law & Order fan. Um, I did like The Good Wife. This, I'm in. Okay. This was really, and I haven't loved, I haven't loved a network show since The Good Wife. And let me say this, too. I'm not going to give anything away. You're going to see that headline, uh, this headline around the trades. There is a twist at the end that made a good show small g great. Okay. Um, there is a great twist at the end. Nice. The last, the last five minutes, you go, oh. Okay. Oh, this isn't quite what we thought it was yeah All right. it's good you can watch it right now on paramount plus the only bad thing cbs you debut the show and now we have to wait till basically the end of october oh, i mean but yeah i don't know anyway uh next up uh villains unite that's right thank you <laughs> yay <laughs> we're cheering for bad people oh yeah <laughs> Marvel drops the first trailer for their next, uh, for their next superhero movie featuring the top supervillains in the Marvel Universe. Uh, this is Thunderbolt's asterisk. 
Everyone here has done bad things. Shadow ops. Robbing government labs. Contract kills. Yeah, so? So, someone wants us gone. This belief that there are good guys and there are bad guys. What's the plan? This could get messy. But eventually, you come to realize that there are bad guys and there are worse guys and nothing else. Look at you. So adorable. Asterisk. Florence Hugh, my girl Julie Louis Dreyfus, uh, lead the cast. It opens May of next year. I'm, you know, I've said it many times. I'm yes and no with Marvel. I don't, I don't love all the movies, especially this latest phase. I love the first phase with all the Avengers. Anyway. Um, this looks interesting. I love Julie Louis Dreyfus. Um, this is kind of their uh, Marvel's version of Suicide Squad, where it's a bunch of villains yeah. working together. But I don't know a lot about any of those characters. I don't either. And I do feel like um, Disney Plus already did this with the, the Descendants. This is a children's series. It's a joke. A children's <laughs> series of movies where they sing songs and the kids love it. And it's all the villains' children. Check out the Descendants if you haven't yet with kids. Are you a big Descendants fan? I just, uh, my daughter is, so I get to hear her singing about red, red, red. That's the Queen of Hearts' daughter. She has a theme song called Red, and you won't get it out of your head once you hear it once. It'll haunt you for days to come. Yes. I've, I've seen the show. I've met, now I'm going to watch it just because. Oh, the movies? Oh, the, they're Descendants movies, and they're horrible. <laughs> but they're like, Dis they're like Disney horrible, you know what yeah. I mean? Like little kids, like, okay, anyway. I'll yeah, watch it after cool. I watch Bluey, because I yeah. love Bluey. Oh, Bluey is amazing, though. Yeah. Sorry, I'm a 50-year-old man that likes Bluey. Everyone I don't care. Everyone loves Bluey. We're going to take a break. More hot dish when we return. Back after this, everybody. No one ever heard of this thing. No. And barely Bluey. If you only knew what happened during the commercial <laughs> breaks. Anyway, that's why you should come see us. Hey, welcome back. When you're one of yeah. <laughs> when you're one of the most uh, beautiful women in Hollywood, it's not a, a huge surprise that men will likely hit on you. Uh, Halle Berry was on Kimmel on Monday night and talked about being asked out by both. Listen to this by both Michael Jackson and Prince. Watch. Is it true that Michael Jackson asked Babyface to ask you to go on a date with him? I don't know, but I know Prince asked me out on a date. Prince asked you out. He asked personally. He didn't go. He didn't use Babyface as an intermediary. No. No. How did Prince ask you? Was it in person? Yes, sort of. Okay. I was at one of his concerts here on Sunset at the Key Club, and he had somebody come out with a piece of paper. And you know, like kids do, you say, um, do you like me, yes or no? Yeah. <laughs> I went, yes? <laughs> I mean, I'm at his concert, right? Yes? Sure. Came back out again, would you go out with me? <laughs> and did you check one of the boxes? No, no. I didn't send the paper back. You kept the paper? I kept the paper. Can I have it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hallie's new movie, uh, Never Let Go, is playing now. I, Hallie's one of those people where I made a huge fool of myself oh, um, no. in person. Mm -hmm. I, I was uh, in New York for... X-Men 3, X-3, you know, she was uh, in, in the X-Men movies. So I, I walk into the room to interview her, and when I say this audience, I, I mean this, you think that she's beautiful? No. 
she's inhumanly beautiful. And um, I sat down and <laughs> they put me in the thing, put me in the chair and they put the mic on me and I go, they're like, uh, this is Jason from Minneapolis. Uh, this is Hallie and Hallie goes, hi. And she goes, uh, I said, I go, Hallie, can I just say this? I said, um, I just want to compliment you. I go, I'm gay, so this means nothing, and I'm not a creeper. I go, but you're inhumanly beautiful. And she looked at me, she goes, you're gay? <laughs> And she chuckled a little bit. I'm like, yeah. Don't know what gave it away. I don't know. Yeah. More just for you now, along with American Idol. It's one of the most successful singing competitions on television. It has been for years. Season 26 of The Voice kicked off Monday Jeez. night with two new judges and some serious talent. Look. Danny, Danny Joseph getting a four chair turn from judges Reva McIntyre and Gwen Stefani. New judges Snoop and Michael Buble. By the way, Joseph picked Team Reba. And I was talking to our, our friend Melissa Peterman, who is in Reba's new show, their new show, Happy's Place. I saw Missy at the fair, and I and and uh, Reba had called her, and I'm like, oh God, I'm witnessing a phone call with Reba, you know. <laughs> and I said, well, how's Reba like in the voice? And Reba said, this, this foursome, is like one of their favorites. Really? That this, that the 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 camaraderie and the chemistry between Snoop. Well, think about it. It is a great foursome. You got Snoop and Buble and then Gwen and then Reba. I mean, it is. Uh, <laughs> See, I thought it was. I'm sorry. I said, no, Can I we know. check on the staff? Is uh, Eric okay? You heard that loud thump. Oh no! Eric, are you? Just blink twice if you're okay. You're good. He's good. Oh gosh, his whole get up. It's crazy. Uh, I'm sorry. They're escorting him they're out. They're escorting him. He's fine. If if his family's watching, he's fine. He's yeah. Okay. Can I be honest? Yeah. Like, and I. I thought it seemed like a very weird lineup. Really? Yeah. Oh, I... I think Snoop Dogg is so great with commentary. Obviously, he's a legend, but I thought it was... He was a strange choice for a singing competition, although he's worked with all the best singers, so I guess I don't oh. know. Reba makes total sense. Michael Buble makes sense. I don't know. I, I, I haven't watched The Voice in many cycles. Yeah. I'm going to watch just be well, it's why most of you watch, <laughs> the, the judges, really. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that is why, yeah, totally True. why yeah. you watch, yeah. Next up, it's been nearly 15 years since most of us learned of the term catfishing when it comes to online dating, but it seems people keep getting fooled. We're getting our first look, yeah. We're getting our first look at a new Netflix documentary about one woman's decade-long dupe. This, come back to the TV, watch this, it's called Sweet Bobby. One day, I get a friend request from Bobby that changes my life. Bobby comes from a well-respected family. We had mutual connections. Over the next few months, seven or eight months, 18 months, four years, we've sent thousands of messages. Eventually, he tells me he loves me. We try to make it as normal as you can online. Bobby's friends and family told me he wants to be with me. But there's always an excuse why he can't see me face to face. The stroke, his mental health. Bobby's been shot several times. What is going on? If I wasn't on the other end of the phone line, it upset him. We just fall asleep with the line open. Finally, I was questioning everything. I've never spoken to her in my life. Oh. Oh. It is, as you saw uh, in the titles there, it's based on the uber-popular podcast by the same name. It hits Netflix on October 16th. I, it's hard to wrap your mind around... I know what you're going to say. ...how people 
can go along with a scheme like this for so long. At some point, you have to realize he's been shot six times. Like, that's the excuse. And so it's hard to wrap your mind around someone believing yeah. that this person is still real. And, but I, it seems like they, there's just enough doubt they create in these people's minds. Um, but it's amazing they got the actual guy from the photos to sit in on this to comment on it. Like, oh, that's crazy. Yeah. I... I, I never want to victim shame, but it is. I, but I would be lying to you if I said I don't understand. You know, mm -hmm. especially not in this case, but when you hear these scant, these uh, these dupes where people send these guys thousands of dollars right. and they drain their bank accounts. It's uh, you know, Kara uh, uh, Seven. Yeah. Um, what? What did so you? in this situation, is it like, did she ever send this guy money? Because I never listened to the podcast. Not clear. Not okay. clear. Okay. Because yeah. then it's like, why would this other person even want to catfish and scam them for 10 years then? It's if they're not getting anything out of it, unless it's a mute. I guess I've, I i do not know. To, to lighten things up, because uh, I had a friend. I had, that's, oh, that's what she wrote. Jeff wrote something on the whiteboard to cue me. This is, I'm not going to name her, uh, but I had a friend who uh, I, I, I had dinner with her tonight. And I go, girl, have, you know, have, how's the dating going? And because she, she hadn't been on a date in a long time, she goes, well, I'm online and I met this guy and he said he's Chris Evans. Oh. <laughs> um, that's. Aww. And I went, and I went, okay. And she goes, yeah, we talked for a little while. And then, and then he asked me to send him some Amazon gift cards. <laughs> oh, and I no. went, and I went, girl, <laughs> we were eating sushi. I go, girl, Chris Evans can afford some Amazon gift cards. <laughs> it ain't Captain America. <laughs> I have permission to tell the story. I'm just, but yeah. She was like, I know, but he was real hot. I go, no, he's not. No, it's not really him. Because it's not Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> Next, could, uh, this is going to make you feel old. 30, uh, 30 years ago this week, we all heard this iconic TV theme for the very first time. That's right, we all did it. We all clapped. Yeah. Friends premiered this week in 1994, running for 10 years and becoming one of the most successful shows in television history. History. It still airs every day in syndication around the world. Literally, if you turn on TBS right now, Friends is on, yeah. <laughs> well, Max is celebrating, because Max is owned by Warner Brothers, War anyway. Max is celebrating the 30th anniversary with listen to this, a new game show, uh, d game show called Fast Friends. The biggest fans of Friends will compete against each other, answering trivia questions and doing puzzles to find out who in the world is the biggest Friends fan. It will be set in familiar locations like Rachel and Monica's apartment and Central Perk. Production, by the way, starts next month. If my husband is watching the show, get to a computer now and apply. Thank you. Bring that money home, girl. Yeah. Bring that money home. Okay. So in honor of the show, uh, in honor of the new game show, we're gonna. Uh, I want to put Fallon <laughs> and you out there oh, no. uh, uh, to the test with some friends trivia. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here oh. we go. Here All we right. go. All right. First question, Fallon. How many times was the character Ross married and divorced? Twice, three times, or four times? I believe twice. No, I'm sorry, Fallon. Uh, Did he three and Rachel times. get divorced? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and by the way, if you get one more wrong, you have to leave. Oh. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Next. Oh, my God. Everyone's like, all right, well, she's fine. Bye, okay, Fallon. fine. If yeah. she gets one more wrong, you guys have to leave. <laughs> Bye, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, sorry. No. Next. Okay, here we go, audience. Okay. In a famous episode of Friends where the group played a trivia game, how many categories of towels does the character Monica have? Eight, 11, or 13? Okay, I don't know the answer. Audience, 11? You are right, audience, Thank 11. God. 
we all get to stay. You all get to stay okay. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. I thought you were going to ask, like, what was the question that stumped him? I know it was, like, what Chandler's job is, right? Yeah. That's the question that stumped him. They all, what, what does Chandler do? Yeah. Yeah. You can watch it uh, next season on Max. We're going to take a break. We'll be back after this. Back in a moment. Coming up in just a little bit, easy Halloween treats that you can make with your kids that you'll have fun and they'll have fun as they ask you a thousand questions. And then, end of an era, we are saying goodbye to a great American store. It's a throwback you don't want to miss. That and more when we come back. With uh, just over a month to go until Halloween, if you want to enjoy the spooky season, you got to have spooky snacks. Today, Fallon is showing us two great treats that you can make with your kids uh, using only a few ingredients. Uh, so you found these on Instagram, yeah, right? Yeah, so the first one is from uh, Melody in the Making. And these, I didn't even realize you could do this, but I should have known. You can do basically biscuit donuts with okay. kids. So here we go. Okay. <laughs> wow! Not you open bad. those biscuits fast. Not bad. Okay, so you're gonna take the the biscuit out. Okay. And you're gonna use a very realistic rolling pin. Uh, in this case, it's a water bottle, and yeah. you're gonna roll it out a little bit like dough. Okay. okay. Then you're gonna take a cookie cutter. We're gonna do a seasonal one. We had pumpkin. Let's do two of those. Ghost. Let's roll. Let's okay. roll two of them. We'll roll two out. Okay. Okay, so the first one I'm gonna do a ghost. Okay. So you do the little cookie cutter. Let's roll this out. <laughs> really? Season Listen. 11, we'll get a rolling yeah, pin. Yeah, okay. And we'll do a pumpkin for this one. We'll do a pumpkin for that one, okay? Okay, so. There we go. Got our ghost, got our pumpkin. Okay. And we're gonna pop these in the air fryer. <laughs> Jason, <laughs> you gotta put the cookie cutter in. Oh dear. Okay. What's okay? It's a jack o' lantern. <laughs> oh. Whatever it is, there we go. Okay, you pop these in the air fryer for five minutes. Okay. Oh dear. Okay. Oh no. Oh god. It restarted. It did. Start. It's okay. There we go. All right. Go there down. we go. Let's go down. Okay. So five minutes. Five yeah. minutes in the air fryer. And uh, we'll just, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll count it okay. down. Uh, five minutes from now. Okay, there okay, we go. Then we'll pull them out. Jeff, can you time these? Because this is not timing. Actually, okay. it says 10 minutes. Okay. There we go. Next, this one's even easier, okay? We have melted. Because that was a challenge. <laughs> I thought, I honestly thought yeah. the cookie cutter on the biscuit would be the easiest part. Okay. No. Next, we've just melted some chocolate Why? in this little pan because we're going to make chocolate covered. I'm playing the role of olive. Yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You. Here's an example, okay? So you're gonna get the pretzel on a fork. Okay. There you go. Now, Aww. yes, they're cute like little mummy pretzels. I could go to town on some chocolate covered pretzels, guys. So I'm gonna make 3,000 of these. Um, <laughs> when you do this, Jeff learned the hard way. You wanna make sure you're not putting these on a rack because then this icing is gonna come out and you want icing in, in the, the middle. Holes. And then you immediately wanna put these eyes on here so that they. This is like, I feel like that game on Price is Right where you're timed. Yeah. So you want to put the eyes on as quick as possible. Okay. So that they dry in there. And then you can also add some Halloween sprinkles. Oh. Look at that. Stunning. And it's very, very easy. The fork is important because I've done this hot chocolate before and thought, oh, I'll get a little treat on my finger. Yeah. And then I burned myself, guys. I, you get like, it's like when you pull out a, you know, a pizza roll out of the oven and immediately pop it in your mouth third degree burns in your mouth hole you don't want that um, by the way this the ghost pretzels I think they look more like mummies but that's just me that comes from Rachel Mansfield on a Instagram so I wanted to give her a little shout out oh look I, Jason go he well, is a, a I accidentally <laughs> I accidentally put one of their eyeballs upside down that's okay. so that's okay so that one's gonna have one eye here's an example of what they look like finished okay if you want to see these and oh. you want to try them Look at this, Eric. Let's get a shot of this. Eric has now survived the crash. <laughs> yeah, let's. There we go. That's what they look like. Yeah, oh, look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You want to okay. try them? Well, yeah, because the biscuits aren't done yet. We gotta. I hope I did those biscuits right. 
Uh, well, <laughs> it's questionable. There's a severe problem of I don't know how to do those. They are amazing. Mm. Um, also, have you done these with olive? Not yet, no. But I am a little... <laughs> <laughs> Can I come over when you do? Yeah. A lot of stuff that people say is really easy to make with kids, I do not agree with. <laughs> because they really, like, they want to, like, taste everything. You have to make sure it's nothing that'll burn them like hot chocolate, you know? So I feel like she would be at the station of putting the little eyeballs or the sprinkles on. Yeah. Um, but well, I like it when it's two steps and it's inexpensive. So you're basically just buying these. I think Jeff got the little eyeballs at uh, Walmart, so those were super inexpensive. Um, and just anything that takes like a couple of minutes or less is key with kids. So yeah, because they do. It. We've been joking, but they really do ask a lot of questions. Understatement of the century. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna we're now, gonna check on the donuts. But I have for two, a about, it has about two more uh, about one more minute. Now, when they come out, what do you do with them? Okay, so you want to go ahead and have an icing ready. Jeff used oat milk, so it's a little brown, but <laughs> <laughs> but if you, but he loves oat milk, and that's fine. Whatever He's milk lactose you like. intolerant, yeah. so yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But so, for instance, if we were doing the pumpkins, you just do like a little powdered sugar, a little vanilla, some uh, milk, and then you could use a food coloring. So with the pumpkins, we would add a little orange in there. The ghost, it's fine to have an off-white. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's an eggshell ghost. Yeah. So <laughs> it's so in season for all the beige moms out there yeah. who love, yeah, yeah love right? like, uh, not a ton of color in their life. So okay. we're going to pop these out and just see what they look like. Okay. I'm going to move the... <laughs> oh, no. What? <laughs> They've what? lost their shape. They've lost their shape. Jason's pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> Jack-o-lantern! <laughs> but, okay, okay now, now, let's pour Jeff's oat milk frosting on there. Okay, yeah. let's do a little... Dip, we dip them? No, well, we're just going to pour it on there. I'm just going to pour it on. Okay. <laughs> Jeff's we go. like, why? Why? Okay. And you know what? It's, they're too hot, so the icing is just melting directly off there, so you're going to want to let your biscuits cool. <laughs> and there are some eyes. <laughs> by the way, by the way, if the... <laughs> If the food if, if the if the food network is watching, Fallon and I are available right there. Yeah. Stunning, beautiful. <laughs> Listen, Stephanie Hansen is in Croatia. Don't she can stay there because look at look how at us. This is. Forget. Whatever, Rachel Ray, take that. We're gonna take a break. We'll be back after this. Back in a moment. Welcome back to Cooking with Jason and Fallon. <laughs> it's, it's a disaster in here. That's right. <laughs> That's the tagline. But for it's our not show. stopping the staff from eating the crap. Let me tell Look you. At yeah. Jeff over there, he's making a full tray. Of I know. Them. Well, as it turns out. Yeah. Jason and I ate all the pretzels, and Jeff looked over and goes, oh. They're gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, while Jeff is uh, in the kitchen with Dinah, uh, for, anyone around, for anyone around my age or older, it really is the end of an error, uh, era, not error. Turn off the blue light specials, because audience, the last full remaining full-size Kmart in the U.S. is closing. Wow. The last full-size Kmart can be found uh, in New York on Long Island. The store will permanently close on October 20th, and that leaves only one Kmart. It's a small, it's basically a convenience store in Miami, so we're not counting it. Uh, at one point, uh, Kmart had 2,300 stores around the country, but a merger with Sears and two bankruptcies, basically, uh, well, and the rise of Target and Walmart killed uh, the once uh, just iconic American brand. Uh, Kmart was king in the 80s. It really was. And I'll, I'll talk about my memory in a minute. Uh, and in honor of the final store closing, I wanted to look back, I thought you would love this, at a classic Kmart commercial from 1984. Look at this.
Yeah, we got it good. I, I have, I have anybody, like I said, if you're my age, I had a very, dis I have a, a very distinct memory. I lived in Michigan City, Indiana, and the Dunes Plaza Kmart was where my mother would get me every He-Man toy imaginable. And I, when I think of my childhood and I think about going to get toys, we didn't have a, we did have one toy store in the, in the city, but Kmart was where you went to get your toys and for people that don't know what a blue light special is uh it was great thank you audience you're laughing because do you know what a blue light special is um personally no but my mom worked at kmart for years really? and years probably like a decade yes uh so pretty much my entire life until she went back to college uh she worked at kmart and she would stock the shelves and everything and all of our Christmas presents were layaway items she would pay for throughout the entire year to yep. be able to afford to have a big Christmas for us. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. all my whole Christmas, well yeah, was at Kmart. Yeah. Yeah, a blue light special would come on and kids don't even know what that is. There would be a cart that they would move around with a big like police light on it that was blue and they would turn the light on and then they would get on the intercom and go, we have sales on underwear, blue light special on underwear. <laughs> and you would run to the underwear. Oh, I mean, wow. it was, yeah, it was, okay. and it was where you would save the most money. I remember eating at the cafe at Kmart. Um, and again, just crying, begging for my mom to buy me a Castle Grayskull or whatever. Yeah. At, uh, yeah. It's, it's just sad. Kmart, uh, you know, uh, could have been huge, just like Sears could have been Amazon. Uh, but a lot of, you know, bad mistakes uh, led it here. It's the end of an era. We're going to miss you, Kmart. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after this. I didn't know that about yeah. everybody well all of our favorite tv shows and movies have memorable settings some that take place in real life cities others that are completely made up so how well do you know these fake towns it's game time here we go audience <laughs> playing with us today give it up for connie and phelan everybody okay this is multiple choice. All these questions are multiple choice. You'll have to either uh, guess the TV show or guess the fictional town where the show is set in. Uh, uh, ring your buzzer as soon as I list off the multiple choice. Okay, here we go. What is the town from the Flintstones? Dino Heights, Bedrock, or Stonegate Springs? Connie. Bedrock. Bedrock is right. Bedrock is right. Here we go, next question. Sunnydale is the fictional town from which TV show? Okay, Phelan. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Phelan, we're friends and you already <laughs> broke the rules. I knew it, I'm sorry. Buffy, Pretty Little Liars or Once Upon a Time? Thank you, Phelan. Yes? Um, Buffy the Vampire. You are right, that's right. Phelan is on the board. Okay, here we go. Where was Gilmore Girls set in? Crescent Bay, Willow Bend, or Stars Hollow? Connie. Stars Hollow. You are right. That's right. We are now lucky two guess. to one. Was that a lucky guess? Yep. Well, you heard from big uh, Gilmore fan uh, Fallon back there. Okay, here we go. Oh, speaking of Fallon. What Indiana town is Stranger Things set in? <gasps> Pawnee, Fulton, or Hawkins? Connie. Hawkins. You are right. You are right. Three to one. Come on, Phelan. Okay. <laughs> Number five. Neptune, California is the setting for which TV show? Veronica Mars, Alias, or Dexter? Phelan. Veronica Mars? You are right. You are right, Veronica Mars. Three to two. That was on the UPN network. Okay, here we go. Hands above buzzers. Name the town from the classic Green Acres. Hooterville, Jumble Junction, or Quack Town? Jungle oh. Junction? No. Oh, uh, over to you. Hooterville or Quack Town? Hooterville. You are right. Hooterville. <laughs> That's right. 
<laughs> By the way, Green Acres uh, director Leo also loves. That's right, yeah. Here we go. Where does SpongeBob SquarePants take place? Help, uh, Kelp Kingdom, Bikini Bottom, or Seaweed City? Phelan. Bikini Bottom. Yes! Phelan says with confidence. <laughs> Okay, here we go. This is for our Wisconsin friends. Point Place, Wisconsin is the setting for which TV show? Malcolm in the Middle, Freaks and Geeks, or That 70s Show? Phelan. That 70s Show. You are right. That 70s Show. Phelan is now in the lead by one. By one. Here we go. What? This is the last one. Thank you, judges. What is the fake town in Massachusetts from Dawson's Creek? Dunecrest, Cape Side, or Ocean View Harbor? Phelan. Uh, Cape Side? You are right, and you won. There we go. All right. And Let's listen to this. Bring in the prize. That's right. Oh, oh my look at goodness. this. Look at the Barker Beauty I BB here. It. That's right. You get a beautiful oh teapot. Gosh. You get a mug. And you're not going to go home empty handed. Guess what? Come on, BB, oh our Barker goodness. Beauty. I love it. You get a beautiful blanket. Thank there we you. go. And a mug and tea. Thank you. Murder oh, in a small wow. town. That's right. Premiering on Fox. Check your local listings. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after this. Back after this. There we, I can't shake your hand. There you go. Thank you, love. Don't forget to order your official Jason Show merch. For season 10, we have new mugs, sweatshirts, and t-shirts. Yeah. Yeah, I love the, I, I love the season stuff. It's really great. You'll also find new messenger bags, uh, collector's keychains, and more. Just head to jasonshowstore.com. And while you're online, book your tickets to come see us in person. Free tickets. Yeah, we don't charge you for this crap. Are available. Uh, we make you clap. That's what you, yeah, yeah. You can find them at eventbrite.com, search the Jason Show. Pick a date and join the fun. You're in by 9.30 Central, you're out by 11.15. And please, only reserve a ticket if you can come. We'll be right back. John, get a shot of the kitchen, would you? Uh, this entire show, uh, BB uh, has <laughs> stayed in the kitchen making more uh, <laughs> treats for everybody. No, 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 we don't. We don't. We don't believe in letting chocolate go to waste around here. <laughs> BB, are you making enough for the audience? Yeah, yeah. right there. <laughs> yeah, with Jeff's uh, beige icing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looks it's like your urine sample, but it's oatmeal. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, bring the, don't throw it, don't throw it. Like Hand it to Fallon. It, yeah. Okay, now Jeff, that does look like a urine sample. <laughs> just, just go in, and then when you come out, leave it on the counter. That's right, yeah. <laughs> uh, Mr. Orkut, we'll have your results back in a week. But I yeah. can tell you, I can tell you you're sick. <laughs> By looking at that, you're not, you're not well. <laughs> we, can, uh, <laughs> we can already diagnose yeah. something's wrong. I'm yeah. Well. yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. No, that is, uh, they were good. Oh, my God. Well, I mean, chocolate covered pretzels, not not inventing the wheel here. <laughs> but I mean, it's really It is delightful. one of those things where just because it looks easy on TikTok and Instagram no. doesn't mean it's easy in real life. No. But both, also both Jeff. I mean, that was easy. Let's right. be clear. I'm just that saying. Yeah. But both Jeff and BB said that they do not like the eyeballs. Heads I know. Up. I don't like yeah. the, yeah. Yeah, they didn't like the crunch. Tomorrow, from boy band to solo success, uh, you're going to meet a singer-songwriter uh, right here in the studio. I'm so excited to meet Jonah. That's tomorrow. But right now, that's going to do it for us. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.